Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at SQLite 3, the integer as a primary key, and auto incrementing value. You're going to learn everything about this, and this is an incredible video. Stay tuned. Hope you enjoy. Let us dive in and learn about the integer auto increment. Notice we begin with import SQLite 3. We then build a connect string, and notice I say connect equals SQLite3 connect. This is the name of our file, learn auto increment.db. It's actually a physical file. And then we build a cursor. And then with that cursor, I execute a create table command. Notice I say create table. If not exist, test auto, then that table will have two columns, an ID and integer. It will be the primary key and an auto increment. That means no dupes in this row. And then description is just a text field and it re requires a value, not null. So there is our table. And then we do a commit. In my first video, I showed you what commit was all about. And it's just about letting others know as soon as possible the things that you're changing. However, we need one of these, at least one of these, in our whole script file so we can preserve all the changes to our database. Now, after we create our table, we're then going to do an insert command. Notice I'm using the cursor again, and I say insert into test auto. Test auto is the name of my table. I'm only going to be using the field description. And then I'm going to put this value into that field. And I'm then going to commit that. So now, Tables created, we have one row, and now we're going to say select, whoa, row ID, ID, description from test auto. What is this about? Well, all tables in SQLite get a row ID. A row ID is a unique number. Inside of their documentation, they say that we do not need an auto incrementing column because one already exists. Let's see what their documentation says. Notice here, the auto increment keyword imposes extra CPU, memory, disk space, and disk I.O. overhead and should be avoided if not strictly needed. It's usually not needed. Well, if you're going to auto give me this row ID, the row ID behaves like the auto incrementer and there are some differences, but they're saying we already have it available. Well, after I execute this select statement with execute, that is now available for fetch all. Fetch all will then go iterate over that data and put the results in results. I then test results to not equal none. I then print it and then I close that. Let's see how this works. Notice I have my file test employee underscore class dot pi. We can execute that by saying Python test employee class pi, hit enter. And notice the output came out with one, one, watch this one. Well, we know where all that came from. The row ID is one, the ID is one, and the description is watch this one. And that is our first example. So that we understand all about that data we just created, let's open that and see. Look, learn auto increment DB. I'm going to open that. And notice for my tables, I have two tables. One table is a SQLite sequence, and the other one is my test auto. Test auto had the ID and description. Look at for our SQLite sequence. It has a name and a sequence value. When I go over here and say execute SQL, notice select star from SQLite sequence, execute. Notice the name of my table and its current value. Isn't that sweet? And they did it for you automatically. And we can also go to browse data and actually look at each of our files. So here we have SQLite sequence, name of our table, its current value. And here is the actual table that we just created, test auto. We have one and watch this one. Let's insert another row and see what happens. The only thing that changed in this file is I turned the one into a two 
And if we didn't have this if not exist, and I went to go run this program again, it would bellyache and say that table already exists. But here we're saying we know, uh, we're smart. Then I'm gonna print off the row ID, the ID and description. I'm gonna fetch it into this variable, test to see if it's none, and then print the results. Let's see this work. So the last time we ran this, we had one one, watch this one. When we execute this again, let's see what happens. Notice we get the two, two, and the one. The last time we ran this SQL statement, we got test auto, its current value was one. Let's execute it again. Notice it incremented to two. If I browse my data, notice I have one, watch this one, two, watch this two. And if we go look at the, we have the name of our table, test auto, and the value is two. I think you understand this now. In our second example, we're going to import SQL Lite 3, build a connection. Notice I'm reusing our database, build a cursor so we can execute SQL statements. And now on line eight, I have many test records. Notice I have a list of tuples. Notice the tuple only has one element. To get this to work correctly, there's a workaround where you have to put a comma in there. Now, however hokey pokey you think that is, this is the way it works. Now on line 12, we're gonna execute many and notice that I have one placeholder and I will be getting one and two to insert into this table called test auto. I then will commit that insert and then I will select our three columns and then we will fetch it into results, test for none, print it, and then close it. The name of this file is called test underscore employee2.py. Let's save this and then try to run it. So notice in our previous run, we, we got the one one, the row ID and the ID. The next time we inserted two and watch this two, and notice here that we have a two as a row ID. And now I'll be running Python, I need to spell this correctly, a test employee two. Let's see what happens. And notice we now have three and four, the row ID, the ID, and then the value. The last time we looked at the SQLite sequence, the value was two. Now it is four. Let's browse data. Browse data on our table. Notice that we have four rows, and we just keep adding and adding skills. In our previous example, notice we said cursor execute many test auto, that's the name of our table, and then just one field, and notice just one placeholder. In this example, I'm saying test auto, but ID and description. And notice I'm putting null into ID and a placeholder for description. Notice here, I have a list of tuples, and it's the same case where I have one element, and I need to put this comma there to make this work appropriately. Let's delete this line because that was our last statement. And now we're going to build an insert statement, going to commit that. And we need to put one more line in here that actually does the search. So we then execute the select row ID, ID description from test auto. And that makes an iterator and then fetch all. We'll go through that iterator and take those results back to results. I will test it for not equal none, print it, and then close it. Let's see how this works. Notice the name of this file is test employee three. Save it, and then let's run this. Notice I have Python test underscore employee three all ready to go. Let's execute this. And notice now we're just getting more data. Let's go look at that tool and let's look inside this database. Here was our previous state, notice test auto only had four. Now let's see what we have. Now we're down to eight. Let's execute this and you know that also increments. So this database is pretty comprehensive and it's awesome. We're learning some great, great skills. I'll see you back in the next example. In this example, we're gonna be using the same database. 
Notice on line 9, many test records, I'm using just a list. On line 11, I'm saying 4M in our data. I'm going to get one row at a time. And then notice here, I'm going to insert into test auto ID and description. For ID, I'm going to put null. For description, I have a placeholder. Inside of our value, notice I'm casting each entry as a tuple. So it's M, and because we only have one element, I have to put this comma. After we insert all these records, one, two, three, four records, I then will commit that. We will then do a execute select statement that will build an iterator for us, and then fetch all. Guess what it does? It goes and gets those records and puts it in results. I will then test results to make sure it's not none, loop over it and print each line, and then close it. Let's see how this works. Notice that we're up to test employee 4 now. Let's uh, go ahead and execute that. And now that we have seen those, we got our values. Remember on this one, we, inter we introduced a list, 10, 20, 30, 40, and it was just a list. And we had to make it look like a tuple. Let's look where SQLite sequence is at now. Notice it is at 12, browse data, refresh. We're now at 12 rows in that table. Now our data structures never changed. We still have test auto only has two columns. And now you see the way auto increment. And there you have it team. We'll see you back in our next video. And that was SQLite version three Python. In this video, we learned about the integer data type auto incrementing. We saw how to build sample data, how to insert sample data, and then we used the tool SQLite Browser. We saw how valuable it was. In my next video, I'm going to be going over the foreign key. I'm going to show you how to create tables that are foreign key savvy, and then you'll be able to use that skill. Lastly, uh, thank you very much for supporting my channel for 2021. I look forward to 2022, and hopefully we can do this together. Okay, team, we'll see you back in my next video.